What is baptism? Is baptism still important in our world today? Can we learn anything from the baptism of Jesus Christ? If you've ever asked yourselves these questions, you're at the right place here at the Gospel Message Radio Program. My name is Wes Hepner. Welcome here. I appreciate you being here today. Last week we looked at how the Gospel of Jesus Christ began and how this prophecy in Isaiah prophesies that there will be a Savior that will come. And it starts really as soon as Adam and Eve had sinned. Then already God had a plan for salvation. And last week we looked at this prophecy of Isaiah that there would be a messenger, a man who would prepare the way for Jesus Christ. And we know in the New Testament this man was John the Baptist. And we read last week how people came to him in the wilderness and confessed their sins and were baptized from John. And this John, he was a different man. He ate grasshoppers, he dressed differently. And yet God used exactly this man to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. And maybe the most important thing about John was that he pointed to Jesus. He admitted to the people that were following him, that were coming to him, that someone was coming after him who was much greater than him. A man who he was not even worthy to tie his shoes. John the Baptist had a great goal to prepare the way for Jesus. He had a great message to repent and be baptized, and he had a heart filled with the gospel, which always points from Jesus. And all three of these things we can learn from and grow from. But today, we want to go further into the baptism of Jesus Christ. See, baptism is a very important concept in the Bible. It's an important thing in many churches, but questions are asked like, can baptism save us? Is it our salvation? Is it still important to be baptized? And what can we learn about the example of Jesus and that he was baptized? Before we go into our text verses and the baptism of Jesus, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you for your perfect example in the Gospel of Mark. Lord, I just pray that you would bless each person listening. I pray that if there's anyone struggling, I pray that if there's anyone sick or depressed, that you would strengthen them, that you would help them to be encouraged again, and that they may feel your love near to them. Lord, I just pray that this radio program may be an honor and glory to you, and that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide, and that everything we would say and do, that it really would draw people to you. Jesus, again, I thank you for our salvation. I thank you for the ultimate sacrifice you paid on the cross to pay for the debt of our sins. Again, I ask that you would bless this program and be with each listener. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to read some verses for our text out of Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. And these have to do with the baptism of Jesus Christ. Again, last week we had the beginning of the gospel. John being the one to make a way, a man with a specific message, a different looking man who would not fit in with the normal people of that time. And he preaches to the people that they should repent and be baptized. And underline that word in your Bible, the baptism there. And how he points to one who in his words, he is not worthy to tie his shoes. And then Jesus appears. Mark chapter one, verses nine to 14, please read with me. And it says, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So Jesus comes to John, and the first thing that we see of the adult life of Jesus Christ is his baptism. In fact, it's in all four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Before he began his ministry, we see that he was baptized. We see that he was teaching in the temple as a young boy, but his ministry as an adult, that which is personally written of him, was after his baptism. The Bible does not tell us that he was baptized as a child. He was consecrated in the temple, and we can do that by having a prayer of blessing for our children 
And I think that's a great thing. But Jesus was baptized as an adult, someone who could make his own decisions, and it was his decision to be baptized. And if you look at the verse, it says Jesus comes to be baptized. He makes this decision. He travels from one town to another, from Nazareth to Galilee, to be baptized of John. And it has nothing to do with him getting married or any other decision in life. It was his decision to begin his public ministry. And I think this is a good example for our life. As a child grows up, maybe they accept Jesus, which is wonderful, which is great. But maybe they're not ready for ministry. Maybe they're not ready for service. And it's okay for them to wait until they're that age when they are ready to serve, mature to understand what that means. And the Bible doesn't tell us that baptism has anything to do with marriage. But it is important that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ before we have a relationship with a man or woman that we want to marry. See, how are we going to show true love if we don't have the source of the true love in our hearts? And I know there's many different ways that different churches do this. And I'm not here to say it only has to be done one way and all the other ways are wrong. But this we see of Jesus who was God, had a relationship with God, who spent much time in prayer to God, he wanted to be baptized. And so it should be in our lives, that when we have accepted the free gift of salvation, and we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we will have a desire to be baptized. It's actually interesting, in the Gospel of Matthew, before the baptism of John, John tries to convince him that he doesn't need to be baptized. Let's read those verses from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. It says, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. See, John saw Jesus for who he was. He was the Son of God, the one without sin. He saw that Jesus was not in need of baptism, but John was really in need of the baptism that Jesus could give. The baptism with the Holy Spirit that he talks about in verse 8 of Mark chapter 1. So we see that baptism does not make us righteous or right with God. See, Jesus was righteous. Jesus was right with God. He was in a perfect relationship with God before he was baptized. And yet he was still baptized because he was obedient. It's an example for us. And Jesus himself talks about the importance of baptism in Mark 16, verse 16, where it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus says faith comes first, faith in him. Faith in what he will do, and then baptism. And when we do that, we are saved. So does that mean we have to be baptized with water to be saved? Well, if we look at the second part of that verse, he says, who does not believe will be condemned. It does not say who does not get baptized. The way I understand this is faith is essential to be saved. And if you have faith, you will want to be baptized. But if you should die before you can be baptized, or maybe you accept Jesus Christ when you're younger and want to wait for a while to be baptized, the baptism is not essential for your salvation. The faith is. Peter also believed that it was important to be baptized. We read that in Acts chapter 2, verses 38, where Peter says unto the people, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter tells the people to turn their life around, to believe in Jesus Christ, to follow Jesus Christ, and have forgiveness of sins. And then they will receive the Holy Spirit. Now again, a question that's often asked, do I need to be baptized to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, we read of men in the Old Testament who talked with God, who were led by His Spirit, but we don't really read of them being baptized. And exactly this example of Jesus, who of course was filled with the Spirit, was still baptized. We do read in one of the Gospels that the Spirit descends on Jesus as a dove, but we also know that even as a young boy when Jesus was teaching in the temple, the Spirit of God was on him. And then we have the words of John the Baptist just a few verses earlier. 
Mark 1, 8, an important verse. It says, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist makes it clear that he is baptizing with water, and Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. There is a difference. Acts eleven sixteen says, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Peter tells the people to turn their life around, to believe in Jesus Christ, to follow Jesus Christ, and have forgiveness of sins. And then they will receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 11 verse 16 says, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So there's a difference between these two baptisms. And I believe today that's exactly what happens to us. When we decide to make the decision to accept Jesus Christ, to repent of our sins and believe in him, he works the new birth in us. And then Jesus himself baptizes us with his Holy Spirit at the moment that we are saved. He enters our heart and life when we make that decision, not when we go through a physical baptism. And yet after this, we have the desire to be baptized with a water baptism to be obedient, to show the world the decision we have made to leave a life of sin and follow Jesus. Peter explains the reason for baptism like this in 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter makes it clear that baptism is not where sins are washed away or where we are changed, but it is for our conscience, our obedience to God, to show that Jesus is alive and living in us. It's a symbol for what has already happened in our life, that our sins have been washed away. We have been cleansed. Let's look at our text, verse 10 and 11. It says, And straightway coming out of the water, this is Jesus, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom... I am well pleased. Now with the baptism of Jesus, God himself speaks right after the baptism. The heavens are opened. The Spirit of God descends upon Jesus. Now we know Jesus was one with God and the Spirit, so he had that Spirit already, but it's a picture for us. And the voice from heaven comes saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God himself speaks at the baptism of Jesus. And he says, This is my Son. And I think God still speaks to us like that today. Of course, we have accepted Jesus Christ in faith before baptism. And then in baptism, Jesus speaks to us as a child. He says to us, my son, my daughter, I am well pleased in you. I love you. There's so much we can learn from the baptism of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was right. Jesus did not need to be baptized. He had never committed sin. But he did it as an example for you and me to show us what was pleasing to God, to show us the symbol of baptism. It's interesting, the symbol of baptism is that we have died to our sin, and Jesus, through his blood, has forgiven our sins. And yet when Jesus was baptized, he had not died yet. But Jesus knew what this symbol would mean to all people who would later read the Bible and the story of his baptism. One closing thought. Among churches, among different groups of people, there are many arguments about baptism. What is the right baptism? Is it pouring or sprinkling or submerging? Can someone be baptized twice? Should we be baptized again if we've not been baptized in the faith? And we argue and fight and churches split because of this issue. And what we are really showing through this is that the love of Jesus Christ is not in our hearts the way it should be. Let's remember this. You may think you are right, and you know what is right on the topic of baptism, but Jesus did not say, By this men will know you are my disciples, by how often you are right. He said, By this men will know you are my disciples, in that you love one another. Let's remember to show love, even though we have different views on baptism. And remember that baptism is a symbol of what Jesus has done for us, how his death on the cross washed away our sins. It should always point to Jesus. Colossians 2.12, our closing verse says this, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Thanks for being here on the Gospel Message Radio Program. 
My name is Wes Hepner. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week.